So today, my ponderings on the subject of time management techniques, why they fail and and how they can actually create more overwhelm and stress. And this video has been inspired by a couple of things that have happened really in the last couple of days. Uh, A couple of things that have happened a couple of days. (laughs) Clearly, that word needed to be twice in that sentence. So yesterday I was responding to a question on one of my courses um, on Insight Timer and the lady there was talking about um, breaking down a task into smaller smaller units, sort of taking a big task and chunking it down. That was the word she actually used. And in, in that particular case, it was about um, getting overwhelmed about decluttering and... Um, I was really struck by my immediate thought about that, which was that who who made up chunking and who said that was helpful? That's the first thing. Like we, we just talk about these time management tools as if they're actually true, as if they're actually something real, as if they're just that's the way you do it kind of thing. So that's the first thing about anything to do with time management techniques is that somebody at some point worked out that for them there was a helpfulness around breaking a big task into smaller pieces and they then wrote books about it probably made some <laughs> some some videos about it or some tracks about it or whatever and and sh- and shared that with the world and the world then went oh yeah let's all do the chunking thing let's all chunk our big tasks into smaller tasks and make that easier But actually, for me, let's take the chunking, for example. If I'm considering a big task, I mean, it actually feels quite overwhelming to try to chunk that down into smaller tasks in the first place. So the chunking or any other time management technique can just become another thing to do. So we've got this big task, we're feeling quite overwhelmed about the big task, not the big task that's causing the overwhelm, our thinking about it. And then we've got another layer on top, which is the time management technique, like chunking, for example, or another one is time blocking, which I used to try and do. (laughs) It's an epic fail on every level. And, And so we get very caught up in trying to, you know, trying to use that tool technique. We might not really know how to do it. Um, we've probably just heard of it. We've already chunking, chunking, that's the thing to do. Or do we even know what that, what the process of that is? Or what the process of the person who invented it and said it was a really good idea is? Well, that might not be the process that works for us anyway. And then we can spend a lot of time trying to work out how to chunk down the big task into smaller tasks. And take ourselves right down a rabbit hole, quite frankly. So, I mean, my my kind of response to that is, well, just just make a start. Just pick up, you know, if it's decluttering, pick up this thing, <laughs> this bobble, and, and find uh, it's having a home on my wrist. I need a bobble on my wrist all the time. Because <laughs> when I eat, I like to get my hair like out of the way. I don't like eating with hair dangling down. Um, anyway, um or preparing food, I do tear my, tie my hair back, but I do live with a food safety manager, so, you know, <laughs> I do have to tie my hair back when I'm preparing food. Um, so, so, you know, it's just pick up a thing, pick up this thing and find a home for it. Pick up the next thing and find a home for that. Pick up something and go, this doesn't even need to be in my life anymore, goodbye. You know, you might even do the lovely Marie Kondo of, you know, does this create joy or is it useful? And if it meets neither of those criteria, that's a criteria by which you can let things go if you choose to do it that way. That's another just another tool or technique, isn't it, really? But that might be the way you choose to do it. But if we're if we're looking at all this stuff and then going, oh, my God, I've got to chunk it down first. And then I've got to, you know, like just open a drawer, pick up some things and put them away or throw them away or do whatever. Just start somewhere. And it's really interesting, actually, because once there is a bit of momentum with things, I think we just tend to we tend to get going once we've got over that initial discomfort that that doing the thing might bring up. We actually just we just tend to get on with it and we probably achieve like our chunks will be because because a job probably will turn into chunks. But I feel like that happens that way round rather than reverse engineering it. You know, like the chunk, there's a chunk, 
which has, has emerged from the fact that for half an hour today I took this drawer and I decluttered it and got rid of stuff and now I have a drawer that's got a lot less stuff in it and and that took me half an hour I can't you can't reverse engineer that because most of the time we've no idea how long things are going to take and then it might be that after we've done a half an hour we think "Mm, do you know what I've still got a bit of energy for this job I'm going to do another half an hour or I'm going to I've I've had enough now and I'm going to go do something else you know we we, you can't predict that I think we're so much with a lot of these time management techniques we're getting so ahead of ourselves you know, we're so far in the future, trying to literally control every moment of our lives. So, you know, I've talked about chunking. I've mentioned briefly time blocking, you know, taking this time blocking to explain time blocking, just in case you don't haven't heard of it. Please don't go researching time blocking on the back of this video. I'm trying to discourage you not to get too much involved in that. But, you know, the idea that we make an appointment, especially if you're self-employed, I think, you make an appointment with yourself to do this particular task and you put that in your diary and you decide that's when you're going to do it. Now, if that if that intuitively feels really good to you, then great. If you find yourself doing that very naturally and, it, yeah, it makes sense, we'll do this thing, we'll do that, that, brilliant. If, however, you've just heard somewhere that this is the thing to do and this is how to be a good business owner, I mean, I got really caught up in that when I started my first business this is how to be a good business owner. These are the these are the rules of engagement for being a business owner, which, which was, you know, actually exhausting in the end and, and very very overwhelming because it seemed like there are all these counter in well counter to my intuitive things to do that just didn't didn't you know they weren't coming from me. And I I was chatting to a client today and I was saying some of the best time management tools I've come up with or, you know, the illusion of managing time, which, of course, is what it really is. A lot of the best ones and a lot of the best ways I've got to kind of organise myself and get things done. And, you know, we've all got things to do. I have a list, you know, that has come. All of that has come from my own kind of working things out for myself finding the way that works for me and I have a little jumble of things now so I have a little notepad here that you know if something somebody says something to me on a call or I need to remember to book a client into their next session I'll just jot it down on there because I find if I put that somewhere else that job might get missed and I did once forget to book a client in so that wasn't very good was it but um you know so I I, I like to just jot things down so in fact the inspiration for this video came from these two things that have happened in the last 24 hours with um, this young this lady on um, Insight Timer and one, of, and one of my clients where we we're talking about time management techniques. And um, and I made a note of it on here, the, 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 you know, what I want to talk about in the video. That makes sense to me. Now, as soon as I finish that, this video, this piece of paper will get, it'll get crossed out and I'll just leave it, I'll leave it on my desk just to note things down. I then use tasks on Google I mean, it's not a promo, <laughs> promo for good, but I use tasks. We've all got that available. It's free for most of us. Um, and I just, gen, gen, you know, I just put gentle reminders on there. So I try to do three videos for YouTube a week. And, and I put that, I put that on my little, you know, and it, it just gives me a little nudge. Claire, have you done that little job? Have you written to your email list? Have you made a YouTube video? Have you made your three YouTube videos this week? That kind of thing. So that so there's little reminders there, and and to be fair, I'm 53, and uh, maybe my memory isn't quite what it was. So most of that for me is actually not some great big strategic issue. It's more to do with the fact that I can forget to do things. But as I get in, I find that as I get into a routine with things, and I get a bit more like, yeah, I'm going to do three YouTube videos. First of all, there's something my client and I were talking about today was intentionality, is that there's an intention to move in a certain direction. So for me, you know, I'm wanting to get more followers on YouTube. Just while I'm mentioning that, you know, do just (laughs) follow me if you can. That'd be lovely. And pop a little like on the video if you can. Um, So that, so that, um, you know, there's this there's this kind of intentionality, this sense of, yeah, come on, this is what we're working on at the moment. This is the place where we're exploring hanging out is YouTube. 
and and so I'm making a video for YouTube and I'm trying to do three weeks. So there's some sort of intentionality. There's some sense of trying to create titles that are, are useful for people and helpful for people and particularly helpful for the clients who might want to access my thriving woman approach. Um, those those in particular those high achieving Gen X women that I'm really interested in working with and think I can really support well. So so there's there's intention. I I just do think that we can get so caught up in the, the time management tool that we don't actually get the thing done that we need to get done. Whereas if we're just carrying this, yeah, I've got an intention to move towards money making activities. We've got intention to do some things on the website, to create a blog, to do some YouTube videos. Like just that intention has got a nice a nicer energy to it. And that doesn't mean I'm not saying don't do don't do tools and techniques. I'm not saying don't do strategies. I'm just saying don't make them absolutely everything, you know, like play with them, enjoy them, but don't use them as a tool to beat yourself up. So I hope that's been helpful. As I say, if you can drop me a follow, that'd be lovely. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and lots of love.